Hello everyone, Amy R. here at Prairie Paper and Ink with a fun card I created using some of the new Honey Bee Stamps products. So I started off with some Bristol Smooth cardstock and I am using the Ocean Borders stamp set. And I'm using the large stamp from this and I'm just leaving it on its backing sheet and I've just flipped the stamp over so it's face up on my desk. And I had already used my anti-static powder tool on the Bristol Smooth cardstock. And then I inked up the large stamp with some Versamark ink, so just a clear, sticky, slow drying ink. And I press down the um, cardstock onto the paper and then I'm just pressing down with my fingers and trying to make sure that I get as even of an impression as possible. And then I'm gonna coat this with some Nouveau clear embossing powder. I chose clear instead of white because I didn't want it as stark white since this is technically the background of this card and it's going to be very busy regardless. So I just wanted it to be just the slightest bit softer. Really, there's not a huge difference since it's clear on white, but in my head, when I was making this, it wasn't as stark as just using white embossing powder. <laughs> so I melted that completely with my heat tool. And my whole idea with this was I wanted to kind of do a bit of a splatter effect um, with Distress Inks. So I pulled out my new to me tonic mat. This is very similar to the Ranger Craft mat in that um, it'll kind of resist ink. So I can smush my different colors of Distress Ink onto this background. And I used Tumbled Glass, Mermaid Lagoon, Peacock Feathers, and Cracked Pistachio. And just smushed all my mini ink pads multiple times all over this background. And then I sprayed it lightly with some water. And then I'm just gonna press that embossed piece of cardstock into this. So I end up getting ink all over my fingers. That doesn't really bother me. They're actually still stained as of doing this voiceover, especially my thumb. <laughs> if when doing this kind of technique, if it really bothers you, I would totally wear like a pair, you know, latex gloves or whatever, just to protect your hands. But like I said, it doesn't really bother me. But I mushed it all in, I pressed it in several times, and then I sped up the drying process with my heat tool again, just so I didn't have to wait so long. And then I pressed it into the background again, and even used my fingers here and there to just kind of move the color around. And then um, blotted up the excess, and then wiped off all that extra ink, because I wanted to pull in more of that cracked pistachio, that's that little bit of green, I thought it looked really pretty. So I smushed that ink pad again onto the craft mat, sprayed it with water, pressed it onto the background, and then I was happy with it. So if you want to do something even faster, it, you could just like use a large brush and watercolor the background, press the ink pad onto, you know, an acrylic block, pick it up with a large brush and do a quick swash. I just wanted that fun sort of splattery look on the background. So that's why I did it um, the way I did. So once I was done with that, I took a second piece of the same Bristol Smooth cardstock and I used it in my Misty and I'm inking up the images from the Swimming By stamp set and I'm inking them up with Hero Arts Intense Black Ink, which is um, a good waterproof ink. The more I've been experimenting with this ink, it works really well with watercolors. And in this case, I'm using my Clean Color Real Brush Markers to watercolor in this image. So I started off with the blush color and I'm using that to color in her skin. And then while it's still wet, I'm adding a little bit of pale rose to her cheeks and then kind of blending that out a little bit. And then um, off camera, I dried this quickly before I went on to the next part since this was stamped in black and not heat embossed like I usually do when I'm watercoloring. So I had to make sure each area was dry before I went on the next so that, you know, the colors aren't going to ble bleed into each other. And for her hair, I was kind of thinking of Ariel. <laughs> I wanted to do kind of bright red hair, but then at the same time, I'm still on this like ombre kick and I love, you know, doing like rainbow hair and different colors of hair, especially when it comes to mermaids, because it's just fun. So I ended up using three different colors to do her hair, starting with the red and then working to that orange and then that little bit of yellow. And then while I was doing that, I decided to do her entire, you know, outfit, mermaid tail, whatever, um, in those same colors. So I just went and used the orange and the yellow for her tail and just kind of blended those into each other with my water brush. And then for the ends of her tail, I used the yellow and the geranium red and same thing, just blended those together with my water brush. And I'm gonna go on and do the little turtle that's in the set. I thought I would stamp and include that on the card just because it's so cute. So I'm just using greens to color them in and same thing, just scribbling on the marker and then pulling that out with my water brush to smooth everything out and you know give it that fun little watercolor look and um i sped up all this watercoloring by about 400 percent this you know it didn't take me that long to color but this is a lot faster than i can ever hope to do normally 
So once all of that was done and this was completely dry, I had my Secura sparkle pen literally sitting in front of my face while I was creating this. And I was like, you know, those will look so fun if I outlined her hair with that pen and just give it shimmer. Um, I'm not being careful with this. It looks like I'm following the lines perfectly, but I'm not. I just quickly went over, you know, some of, the, of it went over the stamp line. Some went just over the hair and I didn't like mind at all. And then I decided as I was doing that, I couldn't stop. I never know when to stop. So I went along her little shell bra and then her little mermaid tail. And then I added a bunch of dots to the mermaid tail as well because I just wanted shimmer, lots of shimmer. It's just so pretty. I had thought about adding stickles instead, but I wanted to die cut this and I didn't have time to let, you know, stickles sit and dry. So the jelly roll pen was just a nice little compromise. So once all that was done, I'm using the coordinating dies and I'm taping those into place with some micropore tape before I run these through my Big Shot machine. And then I'm also using the A2 double stitch frames. I trimmed down this background to um, A2 size. So it was four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I used the largest of the A2 frames to die cut the frame in the center area of that background because I wanna create a shaker card. So I have my frame here and I also cut a piece of transparency to the exact same size. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And to adhere that to my frame, I'm using some one eighth inch score tape for this. I prefer tape like this to adhere anything with a transparency over a liquid adhesive, just because liquid adhesive is so much more finic finicky. It'll ooze out if you're not careful. I don't like working with liquid adhesives and transparencies because it's just a bit more of a pain. So score tape is so much fun, or so much easier to use. You just run it along, it rips easily, and then you can just peel off the backing and you're good to go. So that's what I did. I lined the whole inside of the frame with that adhesive and then I'm gonna press that transparent, transparency into place and I've got my window. So once I've created that, this is when my mind starts kind of rolling here. And I decided I wanted to stamp the sentiments on the transparency. I was gonna die cut sentiments instead, but I just got a new stays on opaque white pad. My old one was just horrible. I'd had it for years. So these come uninked. You have to ink up the pad before you use it and you do not need to fully ink the entire pad. I just added enough, more than enough for what I wanted to use this go around. So I just squeeze on the ink and then I have an old gift card that I just used to kind of smush it into the ink pad there and it's good to go. So there's no need to fill the entire pad unless you're planning on doing a ton of stamping all at once. And this one, usually you need to re-ink before each time you use it. It's just the nature of this sort of ink. So I've got my stays on white ink pad inked up. I'm gonna line these sentiments up. I'm using my Misty and the magnets to hold this um, window in place. So I've got um, the magnets, get everything in place, get the sentiments from that same set into place, and I'm going to ink them up with the stays on opaque. I avoided using stays on opaque, and that's why my old ink pad dried up for so many years, because when you're stamping on a transparency, it's very difficult sometimes to keep everything straight up and down. That's where the Misty's wonderful, because you just close the lid and you're good. Whereas when you're holding an acrylic block, the amount of times I would slip, smudge it, have to clean it off, redo it, it was just a pain. So I did that and then to clean my stamps, I'm using Ultra Clean. Do not use Stays On Cleaner on your photopolymer stamps. It will wreck them. I use Ultra Clean and I clean my stamps immediately because Stays On Ink also does not go well with photopolymer stamps. But if you clean them, you're good to go. And I prefer the Ultra Clean because it cleans Stays On Ink really well. It cleans all ink really, really well off my stamps. So I just sprayed it onto a baby wipe and scrubbed those sentiment stamps to remove all that Stays On Opaque ink. And then the ink was completely dry. So now I can flip this over and I'm going to line the back of this frame with foam tape. So I'm cutting my scotch foam tape into thirds because this is a really narrow frame. And I ended up doing two layers of adhesive. And if I had been, I was kind of like flying by the seat of my pants as usual. So if I hadn't have been doing that, I would have doubled up the foam tape before even applying it to the frame. And that would have saved me a bunch of time. But I just did the two layers of foam tape, making sure everything butts up right against each other so there's no gaps in the foam tape. And what I wanted to do was sandwich um, the thread that I'm gonna use to hold this mermaid in place so that she shakes around and isn't just like stationary in the card. So I've got some nylon thread here from Singer and it's basically invisible once you've got it added to your card. So I cut a piece long enough to go from the top and the bottom of the frame here. And I'm going to tape it to the bottom of her tail with just with some scotch tape. 
and then um, right along the top of her head there for the um, other piece right um, along the back again with just some scotch tape and then this way she's going to be kind of suspended with this thread and you're not really going to be able to see it so you can see there how it's just hanging like that so then I'm going to peel off the backing from this foam tape and I'm going to press that nylon thread into the top and bottom areas of the frame, giving just a little bit of leeway, depending on how much you want your image to shake and move is how much um, thread you leave. You know, how taut you pull that thread is how much you're going to um, allow your image to move. So I didn't give her too much leeway because it's such a big image. Um, I just gave it enough that she'll wiggle around a little bit, which is really cute and not like flop all over the place. So it just, again, depends on personal preference. So once I had pressed that thread into place, this is where I added a third layer of foam tape. Usually when I do shaker cards, I never do more than two layers because it makes it quite bulky. But for this sort of a card, I decided to do three because I really wanted space for this because this image was so large. I wanted her to be able to shake around as well as all the elements I wanted to add to the inside. So then to make this shaker easier, I um, cut down a piece of just copy paper because I didn't want to add a bunch of like extra bulk to my card. I just cut a piece of copy paper to A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And I adhered the main part of the background to this piece of copy paper. And then I decided to adhere the turtle right to the background as well. And then I am using some ocean shell sequin mix as well as some clear bubble sequins to make my shaker. And some of those clear bu bubbles I actually adhered to the background with some multimedia matte adhesive just so that they would kind of stay in place when all the other pieces, you know, are going to be on the bottom if the card's propped up. So I poured a bunch of those on and then I'm going to remove the foam tape from the, or the backing from the foam tape from the frame after I trimmed off the little bits of thread that were hanging over um, the outside of the frame. And then this way I can flip this over and adhere this into place to that copy paper. You could adhere all of this to your card base and skip the copy paper completely, but I wanted the like freedom of being able to move this around and making sure I had it all lined up before lining it up on my card base. Because like I said, this all was A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. So I just thought it would be easier to do it this way. Easier for me anyway. So I've got my fun little shaker and sadly because of video and and I'm just not good at taking pictures of my cards, it's really hard to see the sentiment, but in real life it shows up so nicely. So anyway, my card base is just white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches and I scored it at five and a half. So it's a top folding A2 size card. And then I pulled out that mermaid image again and I lined everything up in my mini Misty here. And I'm inking up the mermaid image with the tumble glass and then I just lightly dab that cracked pistachio on it as well just to kind of pull in that little green again and stamp that on the inside of the card and then I grabbed the happy birthday sentiment from that same set and lined that up on the inside of the card and then I'm going to use that same Hero Arts Intense Black ink to stamp that and that's going to finish the inside of my card. And then to adhere my big card front shaker, I'm using my Nouveau adhesive again. And always hard to show on camera, but I'm using very little of this. Just making sure to go around the perimeter and then just lean a little squiggles along the center. But trying not to adhere too much because or use too much adhesive because I didn't want it oozing out. Plus, I don't want it warping all the cardstock. And now I can line this up onto my card base and I've got this fun floating mermaid shaker card. So this was really fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like nothing beats that fun little shaker noise when you're moving this around. So as always, I will have um, a link below the video to my blog post. I will have links to all the supplies you use so you guys can check that out in the description box below the video as well as on the blog. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing, thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.